this is uh, Mr. Brene, and I am uh, producing another screencast to help clarify some confusion we had in class regarding passive and active transport, especially when we we're talking about the SIM port. So passive versus active transport. So passive transport obviously is the, the simplest because it requires no energy and particles move from an area of high concentration, as you can see here, high concentrations to low concentrations. Facilitated diffusion just uses the aid of a transport protein, which is an integral protein embedded in the cell membrane. Now active transport is moving against the gradient, because here we're going from low to high, so it requires energy in the form of ATP. So that's active transport. So here is your ATP molecule, adenosine triphosphate. So what happens is when this bond is broken here with water, which is hydrolysis, we produce AT, ADP, and this uh, phosphate group is removed. One that, once, once that bond is broken, the energy is released. So here's the amount of energy per molecule of ATP. All right, so that's active transport with the aid of ATP. Now there are different categories of uh, active transport. The simplest is just the uniport where one molecule moves from a low to a high. And then we have co-transport, where molecules are moving uh, together in unison. Uh, there's symport and antiport. Symport, two molecules enter or cross the membrane at the same time. Your antiport is when one moves in and one moves out. They are both moving from low to high, low to high. So those are the three types. This is the one type that I want to focus on. So we had talked about the sodium potassium pump where three sodium ions are pumped out of the cell where two potassiums are pumped into the cell. This is active transport. Now what this does is generates this concentration gradient where we have a high concentration of sodium on one side outside the cell and then we have a low inside. This mechanism, the sodium potassium pump, is used in part of the nerve cell, the axon, and what is generated here are concentration gradients. So when you have an impulse in your nervous system, these ions like sodium will pass through from high to low naturally, and that's your impulse. So ATP is used to generate these concentration gradients. So one use of the sodium potassium pump is for electrical impulses in your nervous system. Another one over here is pumping glucose from a low concentration to a high concentration. And this just in, uh, ensures that the cell has plenty of glucose available for the mitochondria to produce the ATP, which allows this whole process to, to, uh, to occur. Now here, what we have is the sodiums are going from high to low, and the glucose is going from low to high. And this is symporter or symport because two molecules are coming across in unison or they're coming across together at the same time. So there is one component that goes from high, which is the sodium, to low, but the glucose goes from low to high. This does not specifically require uh, ATP. The ATP was used in this uh, system over here, which is the sodium potassium pump, to create this gradient where we have the high concentration of sodium, which fuels the intake of glucose. Okay, next I just want to kind of go over endo and exocytosis. So, exocytosis is when particles are released from the cell. So, just a quick review here is the Golgi apparatus, which is the, uh, the organelle inside of the cell that receives a protein from the ER, the rough ER. That protein is repackaged for shipment, and there's two possibilities. One is constitutive secretion, which is unregulated. So this is, as these vesicles are produced, the protein is released. The second type is regulated. This one requires some kind of a signal. It could be a hormone or a neurotransmitter that uh, bonds with this, could be a glycoprotein on the, uh, the cell membrane. That signal will then cause the release of this protein, which was 
uh, in a storage mode. All right, that's exocytosis. Things are being exited from the cell. Endocytosis is when particles are taken in. I'm going to start over here on the right. Phagocytosis is when large particles are taken in by the cell. So these particles collect, and then this cell membrane would eventually pinch off, forming this vesicle or vacuole right here. Penocytosis is when smaller ions and uh, substances enter in with uh, more of a water-based solution. So this is the cell drinking. That's penocytosis. And the third one is receptor-mediated endocytosis. So what this is, is inside of certain regions of the cell membrane, it's coated with this pit, coat protein. The coat protein, it's said to have the function of forming these little, uh, these folds, forming a pocket. This is a, a pocket that will always exist. It's not formed after the receptors have picked up a, uh, an ion or a molecule. It, they always exist as a pocket. Once all of these little receptors, which are the Vs, pick up a, like I said, an ion or some neurotransmitter or hormone, that will then signal this to fold in. And then it pinches off, forming this coated vessel. All right, well, that concludes this review or preview of these processes. Have a great day.